So while we're setting up the poll, I'll just briefly introduce myself if you haven't seen me already hopping around various screens at Pitapalooza so far. I'm Maria Gould. I'm at California Digital Library. I work on persistent identifiers at California Digital Library. And as part of that, I get to lead the ROAR project, which is what I'll be talking about today. So the first um, question that I wanted to start with, because this is kind of a meant to be a ROAR 101 or PIDS 101 kind of session is, is this your first time hearing about ROAR right now? Or have you uh, heard about it prior? So answer that poll and I'll get my slides set up. All right, and friendly Pitapalooza folks running the Crowdcast, is it possible to set up my video side by side next to my slides by unfocusing? Yeah, love it, perfect. All right, so let's take a look at this poll. Some of you here have already heard of Roar, that's awesome. Some of you have not. That is also awesome. It's not too late to vote. It's a simple yes, no question. Or if you want to answer something other than yes or no, you're welcome to do so in the chat. All right, more yeses. So, the session that I prepared for today is called the ABCs of ROAR, Understanding and Using Open Identifiers for Affiliations. And in the spirit of Pitapalooza, wanted to make this a, both an educational and somewhat interactive experience. So we'll get a little bit of that today. And as I mentioned earlier, this was kind of set up to be in the PIDS 101 track, and I wanted to be able to give a very basic introduction to ROAR for those who might not have had the opportunity to attend meetings about ROAR or conferences just given different locations around the world. So for those of you who are brand new to ROAR, this is specifically geared at that audience. If you are already familiar with ROAR, that's great. And you might hear some information that you've heard before, or maybe something new will stand out. And if you have any, you know, feedback afterwards about how we're kind of starting with the basics of ROAR, I would be happy to hear that as well. So let me just make sure my slides are moving in the right place. All right. So the format for today's presentation is going to learn our ABCs. And we're going to learn the ABCs of ROAR to, so that everyone can come away from this lesson learning what is ROAR, how does ROAR work, and how to get involved. And we'll have a little bit of interactive portions throughout so that you can become familiar with how to understand what's in the registry, how to work with some of the information that's in there, et cetera. So let's start with a very fundamental question. What is ROAR? So ROAR is the Research Organization Registry, and this is a community-led registry of open, sustainable, usable, and unique identifiers for every research organization in the world. And as we go along, I'll explain what all of that means. So the registry exists right now. It has been around for just about two years. It already includes IDs and metadata for more than 99,000 research organizations. I'm showing an example of a ROAR record for my organization, California Digital Library here. So you can see the ROAR ID in the upper left corner, the name of my organization, other metadata like the acronym, the URL, the type of organization. And then on the right, you can also see that ROAR IDs are meant to be interoperable with other types of identifiers. So ROAR maps to GRID and ISNI and Wikidata, also the Crossref funder registry, which is not present in the CDL record because CDL is not a funder. 
And um, just going back to the grid ID for a minute, we actually launched the ROAR uh, registry with a seed data from grid. So we are building ROAR on top of grid. At present, the two registries are essentially mirroring each other uh, and grid also includes IDs, um, ROAR IDs in its data as well. So in addition to the 99,000 IDs and metadata for organizations that we have in the registry, we also have a small suite of services and tools built around that to assist um, users who are working with raw data and to assist um, you know, machine-based integrations with the, um, with the raw data set. So that includes an open API. Uh, we also have a reconciler that works with OpenRefine uh, and interested in hearing more from the community about other types of services that they would be interested in. And all of it is openly available on GitHub. So now let's get to the ABCs part and go through some basics to learn a little bit more about ROAR. Um, going back to that description of ROAR at the very beginning, I'm going to unpack that a little bit and make sure that everybody understands the ABCs. So A is for affiliation. And ROAR is meant to be a registry of research organization affiliations. So the focus is really at that top level affiliation use case, um, being able to provide open infrastructure for identifiers uh, that can connect organizations to research outputs to researchers so that it becomes easier to track and to discover all of the research that is associated with a specific institution. And B is for building open infrastructure. So everything that I just said on the previous slide about being able to, um, to have an identifier for organizations and um, to uh, be able to connect researchers to organizations and outputs, none of that is necessarily, that's not anything new that ROAR is inventing. So there are other identifiers for organizations that already exist, um, like some of the ones that ROAR maps to. But it's really important to understand that ROAR is trying to fill a very specific niche in this space by providing infrastructure for organization identifiers that is truly open. So that means the open registry, um, completely accessible, human and machine readable. All of the data is CC0, all of the code is open. We're developing this as a community-based uh, non-commercial project. And so it's those features that really set it apart from other types of identifiers in this space. And the point is not to duplicate those efforts uh, or necessarily to compete with them, but just to provide an open solution to the problem of how can we identify affiliations and how can we best connect them and make it possible for everybody in the world to connect them in our research infrastructure. So C is for community. ROAR is not its own organization. It does not have its own ROAR ID because it is not an organization. It is operated as a collaborative effort right now by California Digital Library, Crossref, and Datasite. Uh, that is the, the current configuration. There was a lot of work leading up to the launch of ROAR that involved a number of different organizations across the scholarly communication world. And so this has really been a community-driven effort from day one or even prior to day one. And that is how uh, ROAR is continuing to operate today. So there is this core set of organizations that's behind ROAR, um, kicking in some resources to keep it going. Uh, but we have um, you know, several broader circles of community advisors uh, and, and participants um, helping to um, give feedback to ROAR, to engage, to you know, work on integrations, uh, and really to um, help make sure that ROAR is specifically meeting, uh, meeting the need for a community-driven identifier for organizations. All right, so to have a better picture of how ROAR kind of fits into this bigger picture of research infrastructure and uh, understand some of the downstream use cases that we see for ROAR IDs, I'm just going to walk through a very simple um, kind of submission-based workflow where we see ROAR IDs being particularly useful and powerful and valuable. So uh, whether 
this submission process involves the submission of a manuscript or um, a data set, um, if that you know, particular system where a researcher is submitting their work is already integrated with ROAR, whenever the researcher is asked to provide an affiliation during the submission process, uh, instead, of, uh, instead of providing just a, um, a free text string, which we know can vary from, from one person to the next. Um, the point is to have that system connected um, to ROAR so that uh, researchers going through that process of selecting an affiliation, they don't necessarily have to know that ROAR IDs are even operating in the background, but they can choose their institutional name from ROAR's controlled list. And then that identifier can be stored in the database, ultimately included as part of the metadata that is published for that particular research output. Um, in, in most cases, we're talking about DOI metadata. Um, so having that ROAR ID for the researcher's affiliation captured in the DOI metadata, and then making sure that that metadata is available downstream, harvestable through APIs and other means, so that institutions looking to find all of the research outputs associated with their institutions can easily find that because there's a standard and consistent identifier being used to uh, associate that institution um, with those outputs and with those researchers who are producing them. So on that note, I will mention that the data site schema uh, for DOIs already includes support for ROAR IDs and the um, Crossref's support for ROAR IDs is planned and is coming out at some point this year. So that's going to be very exciting to have ROAR IDs available in Crossref. So now it is practice time. I said we were um, doing a little bit of school today, elementary school. So we're going to um, have some fun with the basics of poking around in ROAR and seeing what we can do with it. So everybody can take a moment to pull up a perhaps a fresh um, browser tab. I'll walk you through just a few simple exercises that you can do very, very basic, um, just to kind of understand a bit more about what's in ROAR and what you can do with it. So we're going to go over how to find organizations in ROAR, how to run a super basic query in the API, and how you can uh, see connections between ROAR and other PIDs. So let's start with looking up an organization in ROAR search. So you can follow the URL that's on the screen and you can type an organization name into the search box. This example here is showing a search for a California Digital Library. Again, you can search for whatever type of organization you would like. Right, so give everyone a minute to try that out. If you have any immediate questions about the search or about what you're finding in the search, feel free to put them in the chat box or in the question box. Okay. So that is lesson number one. So in the next lesson, we're going to do another search. This one is leveling up a little bit. I don't know among those of you uh, in the audience today, if you're very comfortable with APIs or if you are completely intimidated by APIs or somewhere in between, uh, I just want to make everybody feel comfortable running a very, very simple uh, query with the ROAR API. And if you know a lot more, feel free to do more with it. Um, but just to get everybody kind of at the same starting point, uh, there is a link here on the screen to um, run a query in the ROAR API uh, that's looking for every organization that's in ROAR that is located in Australia. The main, I'll just mention or type into the chat, the main uh, route for the API is, we'll see it in chat in a minute. Ah, someone is already on it. And the main route is, so any immediate questions so far? People are feeling good. 
excited. Powerful. Okay. So let's move on to, yes, yeah, someone is noting it accepts Japanese. Yes, Roar does support a number of languages as well as character sets. That's very important because it is a global registry that we're able to do that. So let's move on to the next and last question, uh, not question, lesson, uh, is to see how, see how ROAR can function uh, in conjunction with other PIDs. So some of you might have seen this in other Pidapalooza sessions so far. I'm showing a screenshot of the Datasite Common service, which is a, a new discovery service made available by Datasite, which is uh, working to bring together all kinds of identifiers to be able to, to show and visualize and uh, reveal different insights about, about the research that those, that those PIDs reflect. So in this example here, I am showing how you can look in Datasite Commons to see all of the um, relevant identifiers and uh, research works associated uh, with UCLA. But um, this is built on the ROAR ID. Uh, you can replace the existing ROAR ID in that string with any other ROAR ID. So this is an example of uh, just some of the ultimate downstream use cases we see being really valuable with ROAR is being able to have that standard and consistent identifier for institutions and then to hook that up to other PIDs to be able to answer important and interesting questions about research. So any questions or comments about Datasite Commons? Okay, so now you all are experts in the very, very basics of how to see what's in ROAR and how to do some basic work with the data that is in ROAR and how to imagine downstream uses in which ROAR IDs can be connected to other PIDs in our research infrastructure. And if you are interested, again, if this is, this is your first time hearing about ROAR and you like what you hear and you want to be more involved in giving feedback on what's going on with ROAR and uh, maybe working on an integration yourself, there are a number of different ways to get involved. We have an active ROAR community group. Uh, anyone is welcome to join. You can just send ROAR an email if you're interested in being part of it. And this group meets every other month for conversations about progress with ROAR and it's an opportunity for community members to share examples of what they're working on and get feedback on those projects as well. Uh, we also have, um, you know, just other ways to support ROAR or to get involved. It's to look at ways if you manage uh, your own uh, your own publishing system or your own repository. Think about opportunities to integrate ROAR into your system wherever you are working with affiliation data. Or if you are using a third party platform, uh, is that platform integrating ROAR or thinking about integrating with ROAR? Uh, we're also going to be doing a lot of work this year on, on curating the registry. I mentioned that we set up ROAR on top of GRID, uh, and what we're working on now is basically how we build on top of that. So we are seeking feedback all the time on, um, you know, it is the coverage is fairly comprehensive, but there are going to be inevitable gaps in coverage or metadata that needs to be corrected. And so we are building in workflows for community members to give us that feedback. I just popped the link to our current request form in there. And 
Uh, lastly, uh, some additional resources to stay up to date on updates. Um, we have an email list. Uh, we publish posts on the blog. Uh, we have an uh, open Slack that anyone can join for discussions. And then I just put the, our GitHub name uh, as well as our YouTube name where we're posting some videos from events and um, some tutorials as well. So thank you for coming to Roar Elementary School today. You have all been excellent students. Appreciate everyone being here. And I think we might have a few minutes for questions. So uh, feel free to post anything in the chat or question box and I will take a look. That's great. I think we've got a question here from John. What about all the institutes within UCLA? Is there a way to aggregate all of them? Ah, oh, that's a good question, John. Yes, so this kind of goes back to what I was talking about with the relationship between ROAR and GRID. Uh, although we did launch the ROAR registry uh, based on GRID, uh, when we launched the registry, we did not at that time include all of the metadata that is currently available in GRID. And uh, GRID does support um, basic relationships between organizations like parent-child and sibling relationships. Uh, it really doesn't go into deep hierarchies within organizations because as I was mentioning before, the purpose of, um, of ROAR, kind of similar to GRID, is really to identify institutions at that principal level. So we're working on, have been working on getting that relationship metadata into ROAR so that we can associate uh, institutions in cases like UCLA where there are some related institutions um, that are, you know, that are satellites of UCLA or the UCLA Med Medical Center so that we can see those relationships in the ROAR data. I see a couple of comments about Wikidata and it was great to see Toby's session just before this. So there's been a lot of interest in, in ROARs in Wikidata. They have been included in Wikidata for about a year and a half now. And people are doing some very interesting things with visualizations of institutions and uh, really looking at using the power of Wikidata uh, with, with ROAR to, uh, to do really cool things. So great to see that happening. Grant, if we've got any more questions, anyone's thought of something that they're, they're burning to ask? If not, I'm sure that you'll be able to contact Maria. I think you've outlined a, a, a raft of ways to be in contact about RAW. And one of the great things about RAW is you, you folk are very accessible and very happy to have chats. Um, so thank you for a roaringly good talk. Uh, I'm so sorry. Not very sorry. You had um, to do it. <laughs> it's my job. Um, thank you to our other speakers as well. Um, this has been a great session. And again, if you want to get in contact with anyone here, um, find them on Slack, find their, their contact details, um, have those conversations. Uh, and thank you again. Have yourselves a, a good little break before the next session. And if we could get a round of applause, that'd be great. Thank you all. Roar.